When you tell a story about a child, you tell a story about trust and love and hope. When you tell a story about a child, you tell a story about what tomorrow can be. When you tell a story about a child, you tell a story about all of us. We'd like to tell you a story about a child. Polly Whittier? Are you my Aunt Polly? No, child. I'm Nancy Palmer. I work for your aunt. She would have come down and fetched you, but she got lots of important meetings this afternoon. She's a pretty important lady, huh? Mm-hmm. One of the most importantest. We'll get you over to the house as soon as we get the rest of your luggage. That is the rest of my luggage. Well, then, let's get scratching. Come on, the car's across the street. into you when I got back into town, but this isn't what I had in mind. Dr. Shannon, what brings you back? <laughs> Fishing season. So who's your friend? This is Miss Harrington's niece. Oh, really? Smile for me, girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. I recognize that smile, all right. <laughs> Though it's been a while. So what's your name, Aunt Polly's niece? I'm Polly. Oh, named after the other Polly, huh? Well, you keep on smiling, girl. You got a good one even if it doesn't get used much around here. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Ooh, come on, child. We got some news to deliver home. Is it me? Am I news? Well, you're full of pep and vinegar. And in the Harrington house, yeah, I say that's good news. Get on in there. Reverend Gillis, it lacks dignity. And whereas it is not my position to choose the topic of Sunday sermon, still I think we need to take into account that a certain authority is needed. Uh, authority, yes. Yes, I surely can understand that. A uh, preacher must have authority over his congregation. Does that mean that you'll change the topic of your sermon to something more meaningful? Uh, meaningful, uh, yes. <laughs> I believe it does, if that's what you want it to mean. If it isn't... What I want is to impress upon parishioners that life is serious, life is real. They're only in church for an hour a week. And if this town is to thrive sooner or later, they've got to come to... <sighs> yes, Nancy, what is it? Your niece is here, ma'am. Oh, yes, of course. Come on.
Well, come closer, child. Come on. Turn around, let me get a look at you. Is that the kind of dress little girls in Detroit wear? My daddy got this out of the missionary barrels at his church. His church? Is your father a minister child? Her father, Reverend Gillis, the gentleman who married my sister, was a deacon in a small church in Detroit, and he and his wife were in an automobile accident. And that's why my niece has come to stay with me now. Doing your Christian duty, Miss Harrington. That'll be written down in the book. Is something wrong with my dress? No, dear, your dress is fine. Just a little faded. My dad said I should be glad it wasn't a pair of boys' pants. They might have cooties. That's very nice, I'm sure. I think it's time that Nancy took you to your room now. My room? My own room? Yes. Won't people get awfully messed up, though? Messed up about what? Two Pollys, me and you. Won't that get them coming when they're going? Well, you are Polly, you see. Nobody calls me Polly. Miss Harrington, yes. But no one has called me Polly for years. Didn't that Dr. Shannon even call her Polly? You saw Dr. Shannon? Uh, yes, ma'am. He said he came back for fishing season. Will Nancy take her to her room? Yes, where were we? Don't be talking about Dr. Shannon. And your Aunt Polly, well, just don't be. Why? Doesn't she like Dr. Shannon? Doc Shannon? Who's talking Doc Shannon? Polly, this is Mrs. Connolly. Mrs. Connolly. This is Polly. <laughs> well, you're a little runchy, aren't you, child? I'm as big as I know how to get. I was just about to take Polly upstairs to her room. You was, but now you're not. You know who is waiting for you out by the carriage house. He is? Mm. Who is? Never you mind who is. You got a room to see and a person to take you there. And you got to tell me about Dr. Shannon coming back to town. I got some things to tell you, too. Like what? Supper's at six. And don't you be late. Miss Harrington has herself a conniption when folks are late for supper. Now, I got most of the dust gone from your room this morning. But there's still lots more for me to do. You don't have to do anymore. I'll get it clean. <laughs> Little girl. <laughs> don't you understand? You are living in the Harrington house now. You are the niece of the richest black lady in the county, and you have to act like it. Hmm. Like it or not, uh, don't you be late for supper. I won't.
have to dust these. These shoes will never get clean. I... Ah, Miss Harrington, Miss Harrington, we are profoundly inundated with maximum pleasure at the honor that your presence brings to our simple establishment. Mr. Furch, my niece. Ah, my niece needs clothes, Mr. Furch. Clothes befitting her station. Ah, well, consider it done, Miss Harrington. We're um, here to serve you. Well, of course you are. I'm leaving the car with you. I'm meeting Miss Tarbell for tea. Then we're going back to the house for a meeting with the orphanage board. Don't be too long. We won't, ma'am. I'll uh, leave this little lamb with you ladies. Call me when it's time to add up the bill. Is that all that radio knows how to play? What do you mean? Do you think it has any Detroit music in there? Detroit music? Yeah, but if I'm going to be a special lady in this town with straw ball clothes, I need some music that knows how to bop de bop de bop You want to hear some music that does what? I want to hear some music that knows how to bop de bop de bop I'm going to... My name is George Dodge. Now, there's some folks who say I'm a little sweet on Nancy here, but they'd be wise not to mention it in front of your Aunt Polly. Now, uh, what do you say about that? Oh, did I ever tell you how much I love ice cream? Ice cream. You're probably Whittier, and I'm Jimmy Bean, and I don't like you. Isn't it hard not to like somebody when you don't even know them? I know enough. Know you're rich, and I'm not. Know you're a girl, and I got no use for girls. And know I'm an orphan, and you're not. And I got no use for that kind either. First off, I live in a rich lady's house, but I'm not rich. Second, I can whistle louder, run faster, and spit farther than any boy ever born. Third, I'm as much as an orphan as you. But there is a reason for you not liking me, and I don't blame you one bit. What's the reason? I'm getting ice cream, and you're not. Big talk for a little girl. Of course, it don't bother me none. 
You sweet young thing, you. Now things are getting things are getting entirely out of hand here. Miss Harrington has invited comments from the goodness of her heart. But the truth of the matter is that it is her money to donate or not, as she sees fit. Well, the truth of the matter is this is our town as much as it is hers. And we have the right to have some say so about this. The issue here is curriculum, Mr. Mayor. And that is surely something that Miss Harrington. Now look, the issue here is keeping those kids in school so they can learn what they need to learn. Now what they're teaching them over there at that often, it just dry as dust. That's why those kids are leaving, leaving and not graduating. Now we better come up with something to make them want to stay. Mr. Mayor, school is school, sir. It's not supposed to be fun. Mrs. Tarbell, there are those of us who think it can be both. And if you had half a brain in that head of yours, you can't talk to my wife that way. Well, if you talk to her like that, I wouldn't have to. I see that Cook has prepared tea cakes in the dining room. And there are some folks that I need to talk to. This meeting will resume again in 10 minutes or so. Polly. Nancy. I thought I told you back at the store that I wanted you home early. Now, here you come, walking. Yeah, Polly, it was my fault. It was so much to see and do with the new clothes and all. I promise it won't happen again. Cross my heart, hope to die. Hope you can't spit. If you're special, I guess you can't spit either, huh? Take those clothes upstairs, hang them up before they get wrinkled. Skedaddle. Hello, Robert. Good to see you, Polly. You're looking wonderful. I'm surprised to see you. I thought Atlanta had claimed you. Oh, Warren asked me to stop by, tell the folks what we've been doing with the music instruction up there. These children are going into the real world, Robert, not some minstrel show. I know all about the real world, Polly. It's where people fall in love. You remember that world? Polly, I think that we should get our meeting started again. Thank you, Amanda. Shall we? I have lived in this house a long time. I know the way. It's beautiful. All it is is clean, child. Though that's a good number of steps along the way to beautiful, I imagine. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me to help you? I would have. Can't ask a person who ain't here. You go at the dress shop getting beautified yourself. Polly, stay here and I'll be right back. Where's she going? I don't know. All I know is where I'm going, and that's anywhere I can soak these weary feet. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Shannon can give you something for your feet. Lord, Dr. Shannon is not a people doctor, Polly. Dr. Shannon is a music doctor. I've never heard of a music doctor before. Well, in that school that Dr. Shannon teaches at up in Atlanta, they call their real good teachers doctors. Got something to do with letters after their names and all kinds of degrees and such. Pretty high tone talk, but they do a lot of that up in Atlanta. Is that why Aunt Polly doesn't like Dr. Shannon? Because he's a music doctor? There was a time when your Aunt Polly and Dr. Shannon liked each other a whole bunch. Talk is. He wanted her to go up to Atlanta with him when he left, but she decided to stay down here and run her family's mill, then the church and the orphanage. <laughs> Ended up running the whole town. Poor thing. Poor us. Here it is, and it's guaranteed to play Detroit music. What is this for? It's for you, for getting me off of the hook about coming home late. Oh. <laughs> I'm the gladdest girl in the whole world. How come? Because I have new clothes, 
clean room, and I have so much glad in me I'm liable to float away. I looked on the blackboard in the kitchen, and I saw we're having roast chicken for Sunday dinner, and I love roast chicken. There's only one thing wrong with roast chicken. What? Cook only serves it on Sunday. What's the matter with Sunday? Degradation, perfidy, sloth, envy, lust, putting on airs. I see it everywhere I go. Yeah, you know who you are. This community's apple is rotten to the core with people and folks who are smelling the roses when they ought to be out gathering up manure for the long, cold winter to come. Tell it. In my daddy's church in Detroit, we can... Shh, we're not in Detroit, darling. We're in Harrington, and in Harrington, we don't talk during Reverend Phillips' sermon. Uh, yeah. So... When you leave this precious house today, when you go out into the world with all of its wickednesses, when you're too weak and unsure of what to do, remember, no matter how evil you are or how wicked and despicable you become, our doors are always open for your return. Amen. Amen. And now we will have the offering and the recessionals. Praise God. See now what I was talking about. Sometimes Sundays just ain't worth it, roast chicken or not. Hmm. Well, there is one thing that you could be glad about. More gladness. <laughs> What's gotten into you, girl? It's just a game my daddy taught me. Think about something glad and hang your hopes high on that. All right. What's the thing we ought to be glad about now? Well, you can be glad because you'll never be farther away from next week's sermon than you are right now. I'm gonna go check things out, bye! <laughs> You're my sweet little angel eyes. I love my sweet, sweet little angel eyes. You've got your wings, I know your spirit flies. My heart's wide open and there's no disguise. I love my sweet little angel eyes. You got me dreaming. Got me singing, open up the skies. You're my sweet little angel
Like the morning when the sun comes up, the sweetest sugar in my coffee cup. And every moment, you're a new surprise. You're my sweet little angel eyes. I love my sweet little angel eyes. You've got your wings, I know your spirit flies. My heart's wide open and there's no disguise. I love my sweet little angel I got off the bus. Saw him coming down here from Detroit. Saw him when we drove through Atlanta. But since I got to Harrison, <laughs> not one. Oh, that's easy. We ate them all up. <laughs> Stop that. Well, it's a silly question. Of course, you don't see no white folks. White folks all live on the snow side of the creek. There's no snow around here. Not snow from the clouds. Miss Snow. She runs things on the other side of the creek, just like your Aunt Polly runs things on this side. Miss Snow, she mean? She's white. People aren't like gumballs, she mean bean. Can't tell what they're like inside because of the color they are outside. You gotta be dumber than a cantaloupe to think like that. Well, I don't know many white folks. We hardly got any truck of them since the bridge burned down. What bridge? What are you talking about? I'll tell you about the bridge and who burned it and everything. If you prove to me you're as brave as you talk, what do I have to do? Follow me and I'll show you, unless you're afraid. I haven't seen any white folk since I got off the bus. Saw them coming down here from Detroit. Saw them when we drove through Atlanta. But since I got to Harrison, <laughs> not one. Oh, that's easy. We ate them all up. <laughs> Stop that. Well, it's a silly question. Of course, you don't see no white folks. White folks all live on the snow side of the creek. There's no snow around here. Not snow from the clouds. Miss Snow. She runs things on the other side of the creek, just like your Aunt Polly runs things on this side. Miss Miss Snow. She mean? She's white. People aren't like gumballs, she mean bean. Can't tell what they're like inside because of the color they are outside. You gotta be dumber than a cantaloupe to think like that. Well, I don't know many white folks. We hardly got any truck of them since the bridge burned down. What bridge? What are you talking about? I'll tell you about the bridge and who burned it and everything. If you prove to me you're as brave as you talk, what do I have to do? Follow me and I'll show you. Unless you're afraid. Well, I can run faster, spit farther, whistle louder than any boy ever born. And I'm not afraid of anything. And that's on account of you ain't met even Pendergast. Who? Follow me and you'll see. <laughs> Hi, Miss Conley. Who is it, Mrs. Conley? It's Dr. Shannon. Won't you ask him in, please?
That won't be necessary, Mrs. Conley. This won't take long. I, I just wanted to drop off some, some of these brochures and a couple of articles. Brochures and pamphlets about what? It's about how kids respond to musical instruction. From your reaction the other day at church, I thought maybe this would help you understand it a little better. Is that why you came back to Harrington, Robert? To see if you could change the teaching methods at the orphanage? You know it isn't. Well, I will read these pamphlets. I'll try to keep an open mind, but... We're not talking about the orphanage, Polly. We're talking about you and me. We're talking about wasted years. Oh, I'm not so sure they've been wasted, Robert. You have a fine career in Atlanta. And I've managed to keep Daddy's mill running. I've managed to keep this town together. Is that your responsibility? Yours and yours alone to keep the town together? There are certain obligations to wealth. There are certain problems, too. I mean, apparently the rich lady living on the hill can't let her beautiful hair down on her neck the way she used to. A rich lady living on the hill can't sing or dance or laugh the way people are allowed to. And apparently a rich lady living on the hill doesn't know that people don't want to be given things. They want to earn them. Because they don't feel good being obligated to a rich lady living on the hill. We seem to have gotten off the track here. We got off the track about five years ago, Polly. I'm trying to put us back on. I'll read these pamphlets. And I'll let you know. And should you decide to stop by again, I do hope you call first. My schedule is terribly hectic. That won't be a problem. I'll be going back to Atlanta by the end of the week. Look at me, like I've done something wrong. I'm proud of the good that I've done. I'm the one they all count on. I've got to be strong. There's battles still left to be won. Don't tell me how love can slip through your hands. Don't ask me what I'm waiting for. Don't make me feel like I'm missing the chance, the chance to have something more, something more. I could only get confusing, and I would just risk losing everything I've got. Something more, like someone to belong to, or someone to hold on. might change me into something that I'm not. I might become that someone. I forgot. 
there it is. Even Pendergast. Ain't that the meanest, coldest name you ever heard? Well, it fits him. Fits him just perfect. Have you ever met him? Don't have to meet him. I've talked with people. He's got himself a whole cellar full of rats. A cellar full of rats? What for? He beats kids to him. That's not true. Why would people say it if it isn't true? Let's go. Where? Closer. Why? Because we're sneaking. And when you're sneaking, you always got to try to get as close as you can get. Don't you know nothing about sneaking? What are your names? I'm waiting for an answer. I don't like to be kept waiting. I'm Polly Whittier. If I'm not back at my Aunt Polly's house by dark, she'll call the police and they'll come looking and find this place. They'll look in your old cellar, too. They'll look in my cellar? Why would they look in my cellar? For bones. Bones. For bones? Bones. Why would they look for bones in my... Oh, that one. I see. And if they find bones in my cellar, do you know what the police will charge me with? They'll charge me with cruelty to rats for feeding them willful, spoiled children. Girl, Jimmy Bean, don't you dare run. Girl, my mama and papa may not be alive, but they sure didn't raise me to be nobody's furball. <laughs> well, I was down in my cellar this morning, and all of my rats are getting too fat. And there's more bones down there than I can handle. So, maybe I'll let you go this time. I agree with your thinking on that matter. Both of you got to promise you'll not come back here again. Cross your heart, hope to die. Let a cat spit in your eye. Can I just promise? I get into a lot of trouble when it comes to things about spitting. That'll do. Be gone. Oh, that's so pretty. I can see why you want to be alone. But I think it's real selfish of you. If I had a rainbow dancing on my wall, I'd want to share it with everyone. How do you make that? I don't make it. The sun makes it, for heaven's sakes. It shines through the lamp over there. It's beautiful. Don't get too fond of it. It goes when the sun sets. But when the sun comes back up in the morning, you have a brand new rainbow again. And that's something to look forward to for sure. What I look forward to is solitude. Well, they're your rainbows. And if you want to keep them to yourself, I guess it's up to you. Thanks for showing me and Jimmy being your house. I didn't show you the house. You barged in. Well, actually, you dragged us in. Come on, if the man said we barge, we barge. And let's barge ourselves right on out of here. If you open the shutter wide, you have a whole wall full of rainbows. You, and I went sneaking with you, so tell me. Tell you what? Who burned down the bridge? What bridge? I don't know. You were the one that said somebody burned down a bridge. Now, who did it? Nobody knows. When the church got built, it was going to be for everybody in town, for folks on both sides of the creek. 
with your Aunt Polly and Miss Snow getting everybody together. Then, night before it was going to open, the bridge across the creek got burned down. And nobody knows who did it? Some say your aunt did it to keep white folks away. Some say Miss Snow did it to blame it on your aunt. Go on. Some say white folks did it to keep us from going on their side of the creek. And I hear some of them are just mean enough to do that, too. Jimmy Bean, I told you. I never said all white folks are bad. I don't even know any white folks. I never even been in a white person's house. Their houses are just like ours, except... You know how colored folks sometimes have pictures of Joe Lewis? Yeah. White folks sometimes have pictures of the Pope or Eisenhower. Can't be the one I would beat Joe Lewis. Mm -mm. Well, now, don't it seem there's people in each and every town moaning, wailing, ranting, raving, Lord, to bring you down. <laughs> they could light a candle, but it seems like they'd rather curse the night. Now, you won't make nothing happen. Just keeping that jaw flap and trying to laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now listen to him. Listen to him, Jordan. Go ahead. Now we all know some people yeah. love complaining, that's for sure. Yeah. But you know you're part of the problem, son, if you ain't part of the kill. Now no one pays attention to a dog that's all barking nobody. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's people in the dark, son, and all they need is a spark, son, shining light. Shine a light, shine a light What a difference you can make Shine a light, shine a light Ain't no use to belly For every man who's wrong There's 20 more who long to do what's right Well yeah. Oh, they need a beacon Stop that wheel of squeaking Shine a light Go, go, we got the shine of y'all Life ain't high and like No need to complain. If the skies are getting cloudy, coming out of the rain. And nobody knows who did it. Some say your aunt did it to keep white folks away. Some say Miss Snow did it to blame it on your aunt. Go on. Some say white folks did it to keep us from going on their side of the creek. And I hear some of them are just mean enough to do that, too. Jimmy Bean, I told you. I never said all white folks are bad. I don't even know any white folks. I never even been in a white person's house. Their houses are just like ours, except... You know how colored folks sometimes have pictures of Joe Lewis? Yeah. White folks sometimes have pictures of the Pope or Eisenhower. Can't be the one that would beat Joe Lewis. <laughs> well, now, don't it seem there's people in each and every town Moaning, wailing, ranting, raving Lord, to bring you down <laughs> They could light a candle But it seems like they'd rather curse the night Now you won't make nothing happen Just keeping that jaw flap and trying to laugh Yeah, 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 now listen to him, listen to him, Jordan Go ahead now we all know some people wow. love complaining, that's for sure. Yeah. But you know you're part of the problem, son, if you ain't part of the kill. Now no one pays attention to a dog that's all barking nobody. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's people in the dark sun, and all they need is a spark sun shining light. Yeah. Shine a light, shine a light. What a difference you can make. Shine a light, shine a light. Ain't no use to bellyache. For every man who's wrong, there's 20 more who long to do what's right. Well, yeah. oh, they need a beacon. Stop that wheel of squeaking shine a light. Go, go, we got the shine of y'all. The light ain't high and like right it. No need to complain. The skies are getting cloudy, coming out of the rain. And the room is getting drafty, close that window, child. If you don't like the song on the radio, get up and turn the time. there's a time for sitting, and there's a time for standing up and fighting. Ooh. Just stop your gums and beat and get up. Oh, you 
You can bring shine a light, shine a light. Moon and they never saw the thing. They say change don't come easy, but with one more soul of pushing it, just might. saying is what we got to do. And what are you talking about? I'm talking about we got as a problem and all of the moaning and wailing in the world not going to change a thing. If we want to get out of this bind, we got to get ourselves organized. Jump back, Jack. What are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about us getting organized. Organized to let Miss Polly Harrington know she can't control everybody's life. That's what I'm talking about. We got to get organized. Eh? That's right. I'm very disappointed in you, young lady. Very disappointed indeed. Sorry, Aunt Polly. I hurried home as fast as I could. And to go to Mr. Pendergast's house like that. Now, Polly, he's just lonely. But that is not the point. The point, I don't want to debate this. The point is that you have done something wrong and you need to be punished. Now, what do you think a fair punishment would be? Well, you could make me listen to that colored choir you have at church. Tomorrow is my day for delivering baskets to the needy and, well, I certainly could use some help with those baskets. Are you suggesting that that be Polly's punishment? Some of those baskets are ever so heavy, Miss Harrington. I mean, jars filled with jellies and so forth, heavy as can be. Polly, did you hear Nancy? Tomorrow you will go with Nancy and Mrs. Connolly to deliver baskets to the needy, and you do exactly as they tell you, understand? Yes, ma'am. Go on into the kitchen. Mrs. Conley will prepare a plate for you. You can eat it in your room, give you time to think about being home when you're supposed to be home. Delivering baskets. What kind of punishment is that? That's just what I was afraid your aunt was going to think. Don't go thinking you fooled that woman into believing that sugar's really salt. She knows this is patty cake stuff been handed out here. Why did she go along with it so easy? I'm sure I wouldn't have any idea unless somebody's reminded her that there's a softer way to go through life. Heaven only knows who that somebody could be. Rainbows color me, sunlight melodies. Just bless her. Don't want to hear it. You Don't have a good day, ma'am. <laughs> but I got a 30. <laughs> 30 is going on 65. The boy 30 years old still living with his mama. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, Reverend, come in. These shoes from Thrift Shack. Thank you. Morning. Uh, morning, Reverend. 
Nice shoes you got on there, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Tell me something. Uh, you and Miss Harrington uh, go over your sermon for next week? No, no, we're still working on it. I, I'm still working on it. Uh, excuse me, am I disturbing something here? Uh, no, sir, Reverend. Why would you say a thing like that? Well, there seemed to be a great deal of laughter and carrying on before I arrived. As soon as I did, it was all morning, Reverend. Have you picked your sermon yet, Reverend? Wouldn't be surprised if there weren't some jokes being told that you didn't care to repeat in front of a man of the cloth. No, sir, Reverend. Nothing like that. And if there were any jokes being told, well, we can't tell you about it. <laughs> Wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, Reverend Gillis. Hey, George, George, come on, man. We got to be at the paper by 10. We're going to get the air. All right. I got to go. But listen, tell your people what's going on, all right? You know what to do. Uh, all right, people. Gentlemen, let, uh, we are. Morning. Sweaters, Forsters. Is this the Forsters' house? It is. Hand me the package. I think this is the very best punishment I've ever had in my life. Oh, <laughs> there's the old dear now. You know she's gonna want gossip, and we'll be here to Perry Como gets rhythm. I know, but we can't disappoint her. Polly, take this down the path on the other side of the road. The Baxters are about a half a mile down that way. We'll come and pick you up as soon as we're done here. Okay. Now listen, you make sure you stay on this side of the creek. Why? What's on the other side? Miss Snow. Woman so mean she'll live forever. Just never find a grave that won't spit her back up. Now, Mrs. Connolly. Get along, Polly. We'll come and get you as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Forrester, how are you today? We come to look under your bed, see if there's any runaway husbands. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like I, I, I don't think they take me seriously. And lately, it's been getting worse and not better. Well, there does seem to be something going on. I've noticed it even in my own house. Mrs. Conley hums when she dusts now. And... And Cook has taken to putting a radio up in the windowsill above the kitchen sink. Listening to some stations in Atlanta. What is a Fats Domino? Uh, he's a singer. Well, well you, you did ask. Again. What is this? That is a list of possible topics for next Sunday's sermon. I especially like number three on that list. The street ahead on the street and narrow. Huh. Miss <laughs> Harrington, now you are a very busy woman, and it strikes me that I might be imposing by allowing you to do so much for me. Therefore, why don't I pick the topics for my sermon in the future? That, that way it will allow you to devote more time and attention to other pursuits. Hush now, Reverend Gillis, I won't hear of it. It's a little thing I can do to keep folks around here on the straight and narrow. Won't hear of you taking all that on your shoulders. Wouldn't be fair at all. One lump or two? And none at all. Thank you very kindly. <laughs> I had enough.
what you're doing here. What do you want? I asked you a question, Missy. Uh, uh, I'm Polly Whittier, and I have a basket for the needy, ma'am. Do I look like one of the needy? It's not for you, it's for the Baxters. The who? The Baxters. They weren't at home, so I thought I could give this to you. Don't you even know the names of your neighbors? Of course not. Would it be okay with Miss Snow if I left this basket here? Maybe later you could take it over? I am Miss Snow. Who'd you think I was? I just heard that Miss Snow was very rich, and lots of rich ladies have servants. One minute you think I'm one of the needy, next you think I'm one of the servants. All I know, I'm trying to help some people that need help. And it's not my fault you don't know the names of your neighbors. And you're probably too mean to have any servant work for you. Cash pudding jelly. And some cornbread and pickled pigs, please. Miss Snow, you give that back. What you doing here? What do you want? I asked you a question, Miss Eve. Uh, uh, I'm Polly Whittier, and I have a basket for the needy, ma'am. Do I look like one of the needy? It's not for you, it's for the Baxters. The who? The Baxters. They weren't at home, so I thought I could give this to you. Don't you even know the names of your neighbors? Of course not. Would it be okay with Miss Snow if I left this basket here? Maybe later you could take it over? I am Miss Snow. Who'd you think I was? I just heard that Miss Snow was very rich, and lots of rich ladies have servants. One minute you think I'm one of the needy, next you think I'm one of the servants. All I know, I'm trying to help some people that need help. And it's not my fault you don't know the names of your neighbors, and you're probably too mean to have any servant work for you. Jelly. Ooh, I love cash pudding jelly. And some cornbread and pickled pigs, please. Miss Snow, you give that back. That doesn't belong to you. Please? First, you want me to take it from you and do the job you're supposed to do. Now you want me to give it back to you? You'll be sure it gets to the Baxters, right? John, you were the one who said I was rich. Now, what would I want with this little bitty basket of food? Being rich doesn't mean you can't be stingy. Besides, you don't keep a rich-looking house. It's all sad and messy. You don't take care of yourself like a rich person. You should be able to afford a comb if you're rich. Some soap and water for that robe. Doesn't matter what this place looks like. Doesn't matter what I look like. I'm the only one that has to put up with seeing me. I see you, and I see that you could be a very pretty person. I think most everybody can. That's what you think, is it? Is that what little Miss Impudent thinks? What are 
you doing? What are you doing? Ninety-seven. Oh. Ninety-eight. Ninety-nine. Two hundred. Oh. That's the hair. And what is this? An invasion? Uh, Miss Snow. That's Miss Conley and Nancy. Polly, we gotta be getting home. Come on. Well, when are you coming back to apologize? Excuse me? Well, I assume you'll be coming back to see that the Baxters get their food basket. And when you do, I assume you'll have the common courtesy to take a few more steps and come and apologize to a poor spinster lady whom you accused of being a food filcher. I just want to know when you're coming back, if you're coming back at all. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Good. There's nothing like a heartfelt apology to start the day, right? For the orphans, for musical instruments and whatever else they need. Anything left over, well, that goes into a community fund. I thought Aunt Polly always gave that money. Well, she did. But this time we're doing it ourselves. We're doing it for ourselves and by ourselves. Can kids come? <laughs> of course they can. Hey, Clyde, put the sign up. Move it to the left now. I gotta find Jimmy B. We gotta talk. That's it. Put the sign up. That's it. This isn't gonna make Miss Harrington very happy. You know she cherishes the time that she gives to the town. Well, Miss Conley, Miss Harrington gonna be unhappy. About a thousand other folks gonna be real happy. Not a bad trade in my book. And I love you too. Bye, baby. Have mercy. I'll call you next Wednesday afternoon. Bye. Oh, Aunt Polly. Isn't it fabulous? I'm not so sure exactly all what's going on here. Everybody's pitching in to raise money for the orphanage. But I always write the check for the orphanage. This is going to be the best bazaar the town ever had. Bizarre, darling. The word is bizarre. And so is the whole idea. Bizarre. Now, why would they go through all this trouble when I can just write a check? Aunt Polly, you ever babysit? Of course not. Why? I used to babysit this little boy in Detroit, Wally O'Neill. He was just a toddler, you know. I had to hold his hands, else he'd fall flat on his face. He got better and better at it, and pretty soon, he'd be pulling away from me holding him. I had to be brave enough to let him go, Aunt Polly. You've got this town up and walking. You have to be brave enough to let it go on its own. Jimmy Bean! Polly! What happened when you let little Wally go on his own? Oh, he fell flat on his face. But he got up with the biggest smile you ever saw. It is the most durable. I can't make up my mind. Maybe you could make this decision another time. As you wish. Though, I hope it's not too late. Hate to see you laid out wearing polka dots against a plaid backing. Are you buying a dress? Little child, we are discussing some serious business here. Buying a dress isn't serious, it's fun. Miss Snow is not buying a dress. I'm helping her pick out a lining for her coffin. Are you sick? I'm old. Can we be about our business now? Old isn't the same as sick, though. Ankle isn't the same as knee, but there is a definite connection. 
But that means she won't sew a patchwork quilt for the bazaar. It's for a good cause. It's for the orphanage. That's on the other side of the creek. Miss Snow doesn't go to the other side of the creek. Hasn't since the bridge burned down. You mean since Eben fell asleep on the job and let them burn the bridge down. Now, child, if you'll excuse us, Miss Snow has some decisions to make about the crushed velvet. Sounds itchy to me. Things don't itch when you're dead. What are you doing? Let go of my hands. That itched like crazy now, didn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. That means you're alive, and I want you to act like it. Is it this time? Mr. Pendergast, are you the only even in this town? Polly! Polly! Robert, what in heaven's name has got Heaven's got nothing to do with it, not one blessed thing. Uh Thank you, demand your tone and lower your voice. Well, save your thanks, because I'm not going to do either one. But I am going to tell you about what I think about what you've done. The paper won't run our ad. I simply mentioned to the manager and editor... Yeah, but once I... people heard about that, they started worrying about their jobs in the mill. They started wondering just how, how petty and mean and vindictive is Miss Polly Harrington going to be? If a simple request from one woman can throw sand into the gears, there couldn't have been much support for that bazaar in the first oh, place. come on, Polly. Let's not underestimate ourselves. It's, it's more than just one woman. There's the woman who runs the mill, you. There's the woman who controls real estate, you. There's the woman who dictates what gets said in church, you. Church. That's not true. And there's the woman who's so afraid she won't be loved. She's got to control an entire town with her checkbook. Now, some people think town is just another word for family. You seem to think it's another word for kingdom. You didn't close the door on your way in, Robert. Don't make the same mistake on your way out. Sounds like it. But some of what Dr. Sharon said isn't true. And Polly doesn't have say so over the church. Nobody can own a church. Can they? We'll talk about it in the morning, sweetheart, OK? times have I stood here in this pulpit and demanded that you come to grips with your weakness. Yeah. No, come to grips with your weaknesses. Yeah. No, no, uh, I come to grips with your wicked weaknesses. Uh, weak wickedness. Uh, Lord, uh, wicked weaknesses. Amen. And how long have you been listening? Oh, uh, just till you found the right thing to say. I suppose I look pretty silly to you out here ranting and raving in the middle of nowhere. Oh, no. I used to be my daddy's congregation when he practiced sermonizing. That's right. 
Your father was uh, a deacon or, or a minister in Detroit. Yeah, he loved sermonizing, except when he didn't think they were getting the word. And that part sounds sadly familiar. Tell me something, Polly. Did your father ever find a solution to that little problem? Oh, sure. He just started basing all of his sermons on the glad text. That's what Dad called them. Glad text? Yeah, like make a joyful noise unto the Lord, shout for joy, be glad in the Lord. Daddy said that there were 800 glad texts. Did you know that? I did not. I do not. Amen. And how long have you been listening? Oh, just till you found the right thing to say. I suppose I look pretty silly to you out here ranting and raving in the middle of nowhere. Oh, no. I used to be my daddy's congregation when he practiced sermonizing. That's right. Your father was uh, a deacon or, or a minister in Detroit. Yeah, he loved sermonizing. Except when he didn't think they were getting the word. And that part sounds sadly familiar. Tell me something, Polly. Did your father ever find a solution to that little problem? Oh, sure. He just started basing all of his sermons on the glad text. That's what Dad called them. Glad text? Yeah, like make a joyful noise unto the Lord, shout for joy, be glad in the Lord. Daddy said that there were 800 glad texts. Did you know that? I did not. I do not. Polly, what brings you all the way out here? Oh, Aunt Polly told me to give this to you. She said that there were some texts from Matthew that maybe you could find a way and fit them into your sermon tomorrow. Lord, Lord, I swear. Lord, if you could show me a way that I could just talk to those people in my own words and not have to scare them half to death because of what that woman says. Reverend Gills, the Lord just did. Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30. Gladness of the heart is the life of man. Now, does that sound like a glad text to you? It sure enough is. And there's one we sure enough deserve. Can you smell the flowers in the air? Hear the birds singing? Can you see the sunlight painting pictures on the clouds? Now, I don't think the good Lord gave us all that and expects us to sit here inside grinding our teeth at each other. <laughs> That's what the glad text is all about. It gives us a taste of the dish that the good Lord has prepared for us. Now, there are some experts that say there are 800 of these glad texts. It's not so. There's 826 exactly. I know because last night I counted every one of them. <laughs> and according to my count, that should keep me in glad text for the next 16 years. That's what I intend to do with your kind permission. Brothers and sisters, make a joyful noise. Amen. 
Even those who do believe Sometimes can wonder Why they feel this way But I know the time has come today To cast fears away You know love and happiness Will bring you closer to one another Oh, change your heart and take my hand Let me lead the way I won't let you go astray Lift your voices and sing Let the joy ring over and over Problem, troubled was my mind. Troubled was this mind. I sat down yesterday, prayed to my heavenly father. Oh, cause my faith had let me down, and hope had lost its way. I heard him say, Lift your voices and sing. Let the joy ring. Over.
Aren't you Jimmy? Polly's young friend. Well, of course you are. Where is she? She ain't near yet. But she told me where you are to put your stuff. Come on. You'll be sharing that booth over there. Oh, I don't think sharing a booth is a good idea. But you have to. Polly was real clear on that. She said you two have been spending too much time alone. Look, you're both Polly's friends. This is Pendergast, and this is Miss Snow. You guys hang out while I go get Polly. You'll get along just fine. You both have a lot in common. We do? Yeah. You're the oldest and grumpiest people I've ever seen in my life. Well. Well, indeed. How long has it been, Miss Snow? It was 17 years ago they burned down that bridge. So that's how long it's been. Miss Snow, I dropped my cigar. No, not now. Then. That night, 17 years ago. Wasn't any they burned down the bridge. Wait. What did you say? Me. I did it. Not on purpose, but I did it. I started to tell you. Got as far as the part about falling asleep. And you exploded at me saying they did this and they did that. And there was so much anger in you, Miss Snow. That I thought it might be better that bridge doesn't get built. Maybe it isn't time yet. And, well, I, I couldn't bring myself to tell you the truth. Mr. Pendergast, did you just use the word yet? Miss Snow, indeed I did. Mr. Pendergast, don't you think it's time that yet became now? Well, maybe we two old, grumpy people should start by sharing a booth and finding out. We'll be going now, Miss Harrington. Very well. We'll see you later, Polly. Honestly, that woman? Jimmy Bean, where are you going? I came to get Polly. She's not going to the bazaar. She's sick? No, but um, I, I just don't think she's going. But there wouldn't be any bazaar if it wasn't for Polly. You're right, son, and we know it. But that's a house full of pain in there right now, and no good to come a stirring it up. Come on, Nancy. Polly, I'm going upstairs to my room. I don't like being able to hear the music. The music doesn't bother you? No. And Polly, you have fun at the bazaar. There are games, there's toys, there are I don't rides. think that'd be a welcome addition there. I don't think anyone would be so pleased to see me there. They want you there. They just have to get to know you. And how do I do that? You just have to show them that you can bop de bop de bop. What? <laughs> yeah, Paul. I love you. Good night. Don't close it. 
Jimmy Bean. What are you doing out there? I came to get you out. There's all sorts of people looking for you at the bazaar. Come on. But I can't leave my Aunt Polly here by herself. You won't be by herself unless she knows she's by herself. Come on. Sort of high up, though. Not for a girl who could run faster, spit farther than anybody in the whole world. It. Jimmy Bean, what are you doing out there? I came to get you out. There's all sorts of people looking for you at the bazaar. Come on. But I can't leave my Aunt Polly here by herself. You won't be by herself unless she knows she's by herself. Come on. Sort of high up, though. Not for a girl who could run faster, spit farther than anybody in the whole world. Come on, give me a hand. Just a little bit farther. Gotcha. Some help, boy. Quick, go get the doctor. Oh, Holly. Oh, Holly, no. Daddy. <laughs> It's my fault, you know. Harley, no. Of course it is. It's my fault. If I had given her permission to go to that bazaar, she wouldn't have had to try to sneak out. If she hadn't tried to climb down that tree. Then you might as well blame the man who planted the tree. There are just some things that are beyond us, Miss Harrington. It's only by relying on God. Oh, oh Reverend, goodness, please. I don't want to hear that talking here this evening. I don't want to hear about some merciful, loving God. I can't believe in a God who would let such a thing happen to a little child like that. All she wanted was love, which I was too afraid to give her. If God truly loved, he never would have let her come to this town. Holly, a miracle happened here Sunday. For the first time in I don't know how long, people were smiling at each other and feeling good about themselves. Now, without that child upstairs, I don't know whether or not we could have pulled it off, but we did. And I don't think we'll ever, ever go back to the old ways again. Now, I don't know why what happened happened. But I do know that there wasn't one day of that child's life that was wasted on small, petty, sour things. She taught us how to love, Polly. She taught us how to live. But she might die. The doctor's coming. It's complicated. Is she going to live? Yes, in that regard, she's safe. Then what regards isn't she safe? There's been a, an injury to the spinal cord. Could be temporary. There's no way of knowing until the swelling goes down. You're talking around something. Get to it, doctor. Whatever it is. Right now, she's paralyzed from the waist down. 
I've told her, and she's taken it about as well as anyone could hope for. You told her? She asked, and she'd have known if I lied. That's a crackerjack of a bright mind she's got. I think she's going to be just fine. But we've gotten that bed upstairs as one brave little pickaninny. Doctor, what we've got in that bed upstairs is one brave little girl who may grow up to be a beautiful young woman. And if she lives long enough, she might become a funny, delightful old lady, but she never was, nor will be in your lifetime or mine. Anybody's picking any. Amen. Times change. Sometimes it's hard for an old man to keep up. Well, we're all here to help you in that process, Doctor. Everybody in this room is here to help you along the way. I'll be back in the morning. Hmm. Well, there's not much more we could do here now. Yes, there is. Room for one more, look like to me. Besides, fat folks never pray alone. We'd be on our knees wherever if we did. Lord, you know who we're praying for here. You know what we want to happen. Lord, please help that child. If you can see fit to do so. And if you can't, well, we're going to need your help in understanding that. We all going to need a considerable amount of help, Lord, if that's your choice. I will be done, amen. Amen. Same. Well, her appetite has improved, and we finally got her to come outside. But she's not the girl we knew before. Miss Harrington! Miss Harrington! Miss Harrington! Excuse me, Dr. Shannon. Come with me, please. You got to see this. <laughs> Bet you can still speak good. What? Bet you can still speak good. Something may happen to your legs. She can still spit. You know, it's kind of like that glad game you're always talking about. I can't walk, Jimmy Bean. Maybe never. I can't have babies. Definitely never. Aren't you supposed to be in school? No. Nope. Holiday. There you are. What are you doing back here? Why aren't you out front? Not out front because I don't want people to see me like this. She's quite right. Of course she's right. I know she's right. Do I look like a fool? Next question. Polly, no one expects you to go out looking like that. But who could stay here when she has a rainbow around her neck? Why spend all that time brightening up rooms when there's a little girl who needs a rainbow in her life? She just mixed up lights. Well, this is nothing but rags sewed into patches. But it'll keep you warm, and I feel cozy if I do say so myself. Did you make this? Yes, I did. <laughs> I sold three of them at the bazaar, matter of fact. There was one plaid satin. Tandest thing I ever saw. You ready? Sooner the better. Whoa! Put me down! Put me down!
lot of people here today have worked very hard to make our first annual bazaar a success. And now they're all pretty tired, every one of them. <laughs> so we have declared a poly day, amen. Amen. All right. amen. So that we may get some rest and so that we will not forget that we all need each other here in this town. Amen. Amen. Miss mm -hmm. Heron, it's up to you. Make a joyful noise. How she came to live with us and how she taught us to build a bridge. <laughs> 